It's clear that this is sort of a, almost a publishing layer on top of Google, in a way, right? In other words, people put their intent into Google, and you listen to that and say, here's the good answer to that. So it's almost like you're publishing on top of Google, in a way. Well, can I just clarify on that? Yeah. I wouldn't say we're published on top of Google. I would say that, especially when we started the company, there really was no Facebook, there was no Twitter, there were no apps, right? So search still is 70% of what people spend their time on. So while we get the information from search, right, if you look at our statistics, our direct traffic to ehow.com is doubling year over year. It's growing faster than our search traffic. I, I'm curious about um, the, you know, if the signal that you're listening to so far has been search, are you also now listening to other signals, like social? signals from Facebook, for example. Is there a signal that you can listen to that is as pure as, as search that you can then use to, to publish you know, your content? If you look at eHow last month, right, over 100,000 individual articles were shared on Facebook and received traffic. So that's a pretty great signal, right? So if you've got a database of 3 million articles, 100,000 were shared, you can look at that and understand as a signal what people on Facebook are consuming differently than maybe what they're consuming on search or apps. Mm -hmm. If you look at the fan pages on Facebook, right, you can get a lot of data. Uh, Crack.com, for instance, has probably close to 700,000 fans. 15% of them visit every day from the fan page. They go from fan page to Cracked, right? So you get a lot of data from that. We also have the number one selling app in health and fitness on Livestrong, right? Tracks calories, burn calories. It's the number one app. We have a lot of data from that. Almost three million people are tracking their foods. Mm -hmm. Over 100 million have. Mm -hmm. So um, over 100 million food items. So we are getting signals mm -hmm. from all different places, not just search. Right. You have a, another side of the business. And you mentioned Livestrong. You mentioned Cracked. You right. mentioned, um, well, you, last week, you, or was it the week before you announced a, a deal with, I'm going to say her name right. Say it. Tara. No, Tyra. Damn it. Tyra. Tyra Banks. Um, and you, uh, you, as a matter of fact, you, you made an announcement this morning. With Rachel Ray. T we tell did. us about that. Do you want to hear about Tyra or Rachel Ray? Well, which would you guys want to hear about? <laughs> okay, we can start with Tyra, then we'll move into Rachel Ray. Okay. So we had announced a few months back that, uh, it was probably about six months ago, that we had a relationship with Tyra Banks, where we're launching a new website called Type F. So it's, it's going to celebrate the beauty of every type of woman. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be based on our content, Tyra's content, a lot of different content. It's actually launching March 15th. Uh, right now it's in beta. Today we announced a little bit different relationship with Rachel Ray, which we're really excited about. And this one actually has two components to it. Uh, the first component is we're branding eHow food with Rachel. And the reason why we're doing that is kind of the three people we serve, right? Our consumers love Rachel. She is the world's most popular cook. She is just absolutely incredibly talented. Everyone uses her meals. And it's something that consumers we think will really enjoy. Second, our content creators, right? When we launched Type F, we found that the people creating content for us were clamoring to write for Tyra Banks' site. Because if you're into fashion and beauty and you're passionate, like our writers are, it's something you want to write on. If you know what the consumers are looking for, right? So we know the consumers are looking for, for instance, how to preserve a wedding dress, right? So, or they're um, looking for something related to cooking, how to, eat a, how to have a gluten-free diet. And they come into the eHow food based on that, and while they're there, they get a chance to see a branded site with Rachel. And the second part of the deal is her buddies, right, or people from our talent and expert program, that we're going to find the next great expert in cooking. And because it's so specific, it may be the next great expert in gluten-free diets. So imagine someone comes in on how to, again, how to manage a gluten-free diet. They get in there, and while they're in there, they get a chance to see a video with a Rachel Ray selected, demand media selected expert on gluten-free diets. So we're using their specific interests to drive them into the website, because we know what they like, and then we're turning the website into a verticalized, branded type of experience. The Google algorithm change, which, which happened last week, was first sort of, it was pre-announced by Google right before your IPO priced, which I'm sure was really, you know, good. It was a, sort of a Maalox moment for you, I imagine. <laughs> um, it was, uh, yeah, it was <laughs> but wait, but on that one, just so we're clear, and the reason why I'm glad you brought it up was Google did not announce Right, that's the problem. There's a perception that Google announced some demand media no. algorithm right. change. And you know, because you well, read I, it, I Google read it, announced you know. a change across their algorithm to go after low quality content, which they define in multiple ways. Right? The problem was in a quiet period, you can't respond and say, uh, that's not what they said. How is the bringing the demand brands and the brands of demand, such as Livestrong and, 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 and uh, Cracked, going in terms of, of selling brand advertising? 
it's going great. I mean, it's going even better than I had expected. We, we believed, and it was, a, it was a risk, right? And that's why we needed someone like Joanne, who really understands the industry, that by telling brand marketers that we know specifically what people want. So a statistic I remember is over the last six months, 6.8 million people were looking up content on how to paint their house, right? 6.8 million people were looking up how to paint their house. If you're a big box retailer or if you're someone trying to sell paint, that is a pretty great audience, right? Uh, we have a bunch of advertisers that uh, offer tax software. If people are searching on how to file my taxes from last year, they're only there for one reason, on how to file their taxes. So by us having this intent-driven intent type of content, right. we're able to offer brands. And just one last point, you know, we, we did a study with Dole that we published where, where Dole, because believe it or not, the number one thing people record on Livestrong is bananas. I have absolutely no idea why. So we went to Dole and said bananas are a really big thing. And we were able to drive 70% of all their entries into a contest because it was so specific. We knew people were strong. they record bananas? They track their bananas. Oh, oh okay. We, record they, they track their bananas. They, they track oh, in the calorie counter, they say, I just had a banana. Were you drinking with everybody last night, John? <laughs> I, well, I just I was, I didn't get the idea of recording bananas. Potassium, yellow. I get it. I know what I, they are. I just. Let's move Let's on. Let's move on. <laughs>